Hi everybody, it's Dr. Rick. I'm Starfleet certified, it's made up, you can't say not. Last week we looked at the hyperspray, a common find in most sick bays and medkits, and continuing the medical theme this time, I thought we could take a look at the dermal regenerator. On the surface, quite a straightforward piece of kit, but there's a lot going on under the hood. As with the last bit of tech, we're also going to look at real world technology that either inspired or is inspired by this medical magic wand. First off, what is it? Well, the name says it all. It regenerates tissue specifically in the dermal layers, the skin, as well as some minor healing beneath it in the dermis. The device itself has undergone several different iterations over the decades, but remains handheld with an energy emitter at one end. However, there are often even different models of regenerator at play within the same sick bay, presumably for different wound types. Basically, the device emits a beneficial radiation that accelerates the healing process of skin cells. This healing effect could also be used to regenerate scar tissue and remove cosmetic blemishes, but all its abilities were focused around the outer layers of the body. It was therefore not an ideal tool to be used on lacerations that went too deep and other such injuries. However, it excelled at healing up to second degree burns and grazes. It can also be used to heal deeper bruising in a limited capacity. The common device actually is a fairly late addition to the Star Trek canon, it being an evolution of earlier items that served a similar purpose. The auto suture has been around in the Trek universe since the early 2150s. This device would close and seal wounds and would work on a deeper level than the dermal regenerator. And I don't mean emotionally. Alongside the closure of a wound, it would promote the healing of the body using a precursor to the technology that was then applied to the dermal regenerators. Early auto sutures in fact resembled more or less contemporary devices, but have decreased in size and scale with time, eventually becoming very compact by the 2360s, and they emit laser beams to seal shut wounds. The anabolic protoplaser is another similar device used to accelerate healing in tissue, specifically by reconnecting veins and arteries that have been severed by damage. These devices are generally used when merely sealing a wound was not enough, sitting somewhere between surgery and stitches. All three of these devices vary in use, but the protoplaser and auto suture date back further than the dermal regenerator, suggesting that the technology at play within the regenerator perhaps was not as effective enough on its own to heal wounds, even surface ones, until much later on in the timeline. I like it when this sort of in-universe consistency is upheld, as it makes for a more immersive evolution of technology. By the 24th century, dermal regenerators were part of the standard medkit, and like the hyperspray, most officers were trained in how to use such a device. Unlike the hyperspray, however, which should be used in conjunction with a medical tricorder to instruct in the correct dosage, the dermal regenerator was quite simply a point and click it's either going to heal a wound or not, in which case greater medical care will be needed. So simple is this device that many civilians own one and will use them to fix their own minor hurts. It's unclear if the dermal regenerator actually disinfects a wound, but I think it unlikely. The device does not spray any chemical during application and any radiation that destroys pathogens might be equally harmful to the patient's own cells. I guess the swift application of a regenerator to a wound is usually enough to prevent infection from other sources, but it might not do anything to remove anything that's already entered the site. As for the real world science, there is not a magical self repair ray like the radiation that is supposedly emitted from the dermal regenerator, but there are numerous other devices that attempt to promote and accelerate the body's own healing processes as well as many studies looking into the application of various similar technologies. Ultrasonic tissue repair is being studied as a potential way to accelerate natural healing, and I'm probably barely gasping the basics here, but apparently it works by causing vibrations that end up stimulating channels on the surface of a cell and allowing for a flow of calcium which in turn helps the body identify a wound site and close it. Hmm. There is also the application of laser technology to repair wounds since at least 1983, much like the fictional auto suture. There is a variety of uses for medical lasers, like suturing a wound shut by inciting coagulation, 
to reacting with a dye on a molecular level to steal electrons from collagen, causing those molecules to adhere to one another and close a wound. There is, of course, also the application of bioprinted skin in a precise fashion, where healthy cultivated cells are adhered to a wound to seal it. Being as they're made from your own body, they are assimilated into the skin, leading to a natural recovery. None of these, however, are instantaneous devices, and honestly, unlikely to ever be. As for the idea that certain types of radiation out there may be beneficial to humans, well again there are studies, but I couldn't find anything definitive and many scientific communities see no rejuvenating effect from any form of radiation. Although the application of radiation does have its place, there is no energy field that can instantly repair wounded cells. Whatever this energy is, it's certainly a handy one, and judging by the evolution of the dermal healing devices, it's one that is still growing in the worlds of Star Trek. The radiation that is emitted from the dermal regenerators is not named, but it makes me think of the Baku homeworld as seen in Star Trek Insurrection. This ringed world reacts with the surrounding briar patch and produces an ambient metaphasic radiation which reverses biological damage over a prolonged period. However, this radiation is not a permanent effect, and according to Starfleet, was not able to be replicated, although the sonar have found a way to siphon off the radiation. So, there we have it, one of the most common sites in Star Trek medicine, and it sort of fits on par with things like the transporter, as opposed to a com badge, for technical realism. Thanks for watching this video on the dermal regenerator, as well as accompanying similar items, and um, let me know what devices you'd also like to see addressed. Thanks again, and goodbye.